Hey guys, welcome back to Hardcastle Homestead. Uh, today is June 23rd, 2023, and we are going to do a garden tour today. There's a lot that has changed. I think it's been two weeks since our last garden tour, possibly even longer than that. Just off the top of my head, I'm guessing, but a lot has changed in the garden. So I'm going to just save it all for us walking together and we're gonna go ahead and jump into the garden. Okay, friends, so just for record keeping, you know, it's always good to do garden tours. I'm not a professional content creator, but I wanted to start tracking and documenting how I do my gardens each year. And instead of being afraid, I just decided to take a leap of faith and just start doing it. I may not be the best. I am totally working off an iPhone, nothing fancy here, but I'm feeling really good at the fact that I'm going to have something to look at in the winter time when I'm sad and missing my garden and dreaming of the design that's going to come with it for the next year. So just holding my dill, isn't it impressive? And the first cucumbers are coming on guys, so this is going to be getting you soon. Um, also, fun note, this is a great toddler method to anyone wanting to do a garden. <laughs> My patchwork didn't last very long though. She'll still play in the water though, but the hole got a lot bigger in her splash pad. Oh well. But splash pads are different ways for them to have fun while you're working in the garden that you still can have active supervision is a great method. Uh, so let's just keep on moving on along. The nasturtium is fine. I did just go through and water the garden before the sun came up though. And that's where the force came out of the hose before I was able to turn down the blast this morning. And look at this. I am starting to have chamomile. I'm picking it as I go and harvesting it and letting it dry in the house so that I can use it for different medicinal purposes. The kale is still looking fierce, and I've got a little cabbage in there. I'm very excited for that. The peppers, uh, we've got Anaheim's and Hatch, Dracula's, um, Trick Dews, and a Lemon Drop. And I saw this while watering this morning, it got me super excited. Look at this beast. Uh, I'm loving it so much. But yeah, the kale's still looking impressive. Uh, we've been doing a lot of dehydrated kale chips and my favorite way to do it that makes it very much family friendly, I just take ranch, um, the dried ranch dressing and sprinkle it on it and then it's kind of like a cool ranch Dorito, but it, with kale. Um, so coming over here, these were all planted later on this side. This guy's struggling. Not sure why, but I've had a lot of struggles with the tomatoes and then they just kind of correct themselves. But with my copper wire, I don't know if this is anything related to it, but I've been seeing a lot of different theories about copper in the garden with pests. So I used the copper wiring just to see if it worked and all my aphids are gone, completely gone. It, it happened within a week. So I don't know if it's just coincidence or what, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, my garlic, I have cut all the scapes off and they are starting the yellow and brown on the top. Hey, baby. Yeah. Sorry, had to pause the video for a second. We, we fell down and our hands landed in the mulch. Yeah. So anyway, here's the garlic, or at least one of the beds. And what you notice is the tops are starting to dry out and get brown. So I will probably be harvesting. My guess would be in a week. Um, I'll just be watching it. I want it to go just a little bit further, let it have a little bit more time for the roots to really finish off. And then I can kind of show you what I've already pulled. That's my soft necks. They all were just toppled over. 
and so I pulled them early. They did not fully develop, but they're still going to taste like garlic. I will probably paste them and can them as like a garlic paste to use. Um, so I really wanted to show you something cool though, guys. Mm, I, I thought the splash pad was going to last longer, so hopefully this video isn't going to be cut short. But look. This is my black cherry tomatoes, and they are starting to blush. I'm so excited. We're so excited, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, those were the black strawberry, and they're like striped, and then these were the Amish paste. Um, I did pull the potatoes, so yay. Have a huge harvest in the video. I'm hoping to get up for you guys soon. Hey. Hey. I guess that one's split. Someone's been having fun pulling the green tomatoes off and it's making me sad. And that one's split, so I'm not gonna be very upset. But what I went ahead and did here was I took my tomatoes that I had left, which weren't very many, they were like a second session. And I think these are Martino's Romas. And I just threw them in here and they'll be harvested this fall. So I'm not too worried about that. My eggplant though, even though the moths are going crazy on them, they are exploding with buds all throughout there. So we've got some traditional, just black beauties. There's one of those culprits now, those moths. And then the lettuce is starting to flower, which is perfect because I really want to pull it out and it's driving me crazy that I can't yet. Um. And then my basil is finally catching up. I did have to direct sow it this year. So I bought some store-bought basil, like not in the grocery store, but like nursery. I got, yeah, you gonna tell the world? Got, yeah. She probably thinks it's grandma trying to FaceTime her since we do live in the age of technology. That's something she's been brought up with. Uh, grandma lives about 200 miles away from us. So we do FaceTime a lot. And here we've got the lemon spice jalapenos and the leaves that are being produced now are definitely darker green, which is very exciting. I didn't think these were gonna do anything because of how long they were potted. So I'm very excited they're doing stuff. So sneaking over here, we have got gorgeous purple tomatillos. And while I was watering this morning, I started to spot little tomatillos starting. So if you've never seen one, here they are. Now obviously they got a long time before we go any further with that. Still have a few radishes living in the shade. Or not radishes, beets. So sorry. I already pulled the radishes. I've got beets. You can see here my planting of the squash. They're starting to grow enough where I can start navigating them. I've got some zinnias I planted back here. I am trying okra for the first time ever, so I just put one there. Well, technically there's two plants. I haven't um, decided which one's gonna live and which one's gonna be snipped yet. And then we've got our habaneros right in here. My poppies have been exploding. So these are uh, just a sprinkling mixture of amazing grays and then Pandora's poppies. I got these on Baker's Creek two or three years ago and they're still producing. And then if you peek over there, that's the falling in love pinks. Looks like we found a hula hoop to entertain ourselves with. So these are the true black brandy wines, and these are a potato leaf variety. And you, they're called potato leaves because their leaves are not like the traditional tomatoes most would be used to. I do need to secure that guy, but I am so excited about the fruit it's putting on. Definitely have some faciated blossoms that turned into tomatoes, but it's okay because I'm gonna leave them there. They've got, enough on them it was probably only like two or three flowers 
that were faciated, that it's a still, it's a viable tomato. The tomato wall though, oh my gosh, it's finally looking like a tomato wall and not a tomato hospice. <laughs> it was looking bad for a minute. So what I'm doing is the two liter system and I've basically let it go split here with a sucker and I'm going to basically train it up two different directions to get more production. And I've done that with a few that were showing good like structure to be able to do that too. And then others, I just have it as a one. Genovesa's looking good. My Paul Robeson's have finally recovered, which makes me happy because it is my favorite tomato and I was gonna be super sad if I didn't get any. Also, I apologize, it is so freaking br bright out today, guys. Um, these are the Abe Lincolns. This guy has exploded. He is triple the size of those, and I bet I put more worm casting in the bottom. We are uh, natural practicing with our garden, so we do not use pesticides. I do not use miracle Grow as a fertilizer. Um, we mainly just use worm casting and hand picking with pests if we can. Um, these are the pink, br pink brandy wines. And then these were the purple Cherokees, which they have been looking impressive this whole time. It's time to ride. Oh, over here, I forgot. The bee bomb. I am so excited for this. I didn't want to disturb him or her while she was eating. Isn't that gorgeous? I will definitely be planting more of this in the years to come. There we go. Sorry about the focus. Also, my pepper wall has been very impressive. And then I've got my paint grass, um, or the blanket. It's a big old G. I can't really pronounce it. Can you read that? And my handwriting's not the best, so. There you go. And then got some details. Some habanadas. I'm doing habanadas and then habaneros, separate areas. I will not be saving the seeds. Um, we've got peppermint and then like a mint julep kind of mint. Uh, calendula is finally about to bloom on this side. This guy's still playing catch up. Um, Got some weeds in there. I'll get to that eventually. I put more of the bee balm right here. I am gonna pull the kale, but I want to get some seeds started before I do that. Um, so I put more of the bee balm over here. Um, just replacing some of the lettuce spots. Some of my calendula has started to bloom. I have dill in this bed as well. I think these are the bouquet dills, but it just went crazy. And so excited because if you saw in the background look at those beauties this was the hodgepodge bed so the onions are looking good in it got my gladiolas and these oh, i just have to get in here close for you guys look at that color it's so rich This is why I do potager gardening. It's just gorgeous. Hey, baby! No, that's not an option. We are currently playing with the charcoal bin. <laughs> Luckily, we haven't grilled in a long time, so it's all cool. She just likes to fill it like sand. I'm not too worried. Nasturtium's looking good. The beans are crazy. I need to go through and pick more. I might even pull a few plants out because it's just gone crazy. Um, and so I've got red onions and some shallots. And then the potatoes over here have also started to fall. So I think what I'm gonna do 
because the onions are starting to look really good. They are starting to fall over, which is kind of the sign that they're almost done. Sometime during this next week, I will be pulling this area of onions and I'll be doing another succession planting of bush beans here. After, of course, I amend the soil, which I'll amend it with worm casting. Um, so in here, we're starting to get some cucumbers. I need to go through though. I have been following uh, Jill with Whispering Willow Farms. I really like Jill, just both her content and what she's putting out there, but also I fully support and strongly recommend to anyone getting into gardening Follow someone that's close to your zone and close to your location. Jill is one state south of me, and that's also how I found Roots and Refuge Farm with Jess when she was in Arkansas. And it kind of helps give you a good structure when you're maybe new to this and you're trying to figure out when do I plant things? When do I harvest things? Um, what's going on with the weird weather temperature. It's really hard if someone say for me example, I'm in Missouri, I am 6B, and there's some content creators I follow like Luke up in Michigan. Um, I also follow the Acre Homestead and she's up in I think Washington State. So their, t their locations are very different from mine. Like she was just planting brassicas and starting to get her summer crops in. Mine have been in for almost two months now. So find someone in your area or your region and that'll make it a lot better time for you if you are new to gardening. I'm getting off my soapbox now. Um, my dahlias, one is about to bloom and I will be cutting them so it will produce more blooms. And then the ginger, has been looking so good. I am just very impressed. This is my first year growing ginger, so it makes me happy. Uh, my squash has all been doing great. Oh, also here's more ginger. Um, so I kind of went with a different method this year to see if it'll help with the squash bugs. And it's actually been a pretty decent method this year for me. Um, I've been planting them sporadically throughout a few different beds. So if one bed does get attacked, the other beds are gonna be fine and those will be sacrificial. Um, I can't remember what I planted there. I will know once I have the fruit though because this is one of the ones that lost the tag. It might be a honey nut squash though. Um, it's basically like a butternut, but it's a little bit smaller and it's yellow honey colored. Um, and then I've done more squash in here. And yeah, it's looking so good. As I go around watering, I usually check the backs of these and that's how you look for the eggs. Um, my rosemaries are doing wonderful. The ants are helping pollinate down in that flower. The beans on this side are also looking glorious. And then the cucumbers on this side are the slicers. They're still trying to put off runners and whatnot, so I really need to go through and trim them up. And then coming back here, I saved it this morning. I really wanted to pick it, but I also wanted to show a perfect size. So this guy is definitely ready. Watermelon are starting to travel. So yay, I need to come through and weed this bed. But, I wanted to show this harvest because with these, I usually just turn it until it lets go itself. Look how pretty this guy is. And we got another one coming on there. And another one over here. I normally only get one or two squash, so this is really exciting for me with my zucchini. Um, because it's gone. Oh, and I want to show you the garlic. Ignore the hot mess of the greenhouse. It always gets cleaned up by the end of the year. But this is kind of what I'm using for my drying space. So I just laid my garlic out. It's a dry, sunny place. The rain does not get in here. 
So you can see they are on the small side. So my plan with these is more, I'm just gonna, like I said before, make a paste with them and just see how that goes. Because I do use garlic a lot in all my cooking along with ginger. So, and there's hula hoops. Um, so, you gonna make a baby? These reusable diapers are awesome when it comes to water play. Hi, honey. Come. <laughs> or not. So over here, this is the area where I pulled the garlic. And then here, I did the same thing like I did with the potatoes. I threw down some fresh worm casting. Oh, that light's so much better in the shade. Can you tell I just watered my carrots? Um, I'm letting my Merlot lettuce go to seed as well. I really love this lettuce. That's why I'm letting so much go to seed. And then over here, I've also got more tomatoes. And then this is the hard neck variety, so I didn't touch that yet, but this was a tomato bed last year, and you can see a tomato's definitely growing up through there. And I'm just gonna let them, because I love tomatoes and I need to can. And I was really worried about all the ones in the uh, containers, so I think I'm gonna have enough tomatoes now and I feel a lot better than I did. But yeah. Iris, you find a toy? So just quick message, um, tomatoes, zucchini, green beans, cucumbers. They're all starting to come in really great. The peppers are coming in great. My brassicas still are surviving, which is awesome because I'm just loving all the kale. Um, but yeah, the garden season is going so much better this year than it did in 2022. And I don't know if anyone else understands and knows the feelings that we all suffered at least in this region during 2022 but last year crazy drought starting in june which is not normally normal usually we're used to like july it's starting to be a little bit rough but it was so early so i had no cucumbers last year very low tomato harvest i put things in the wrong places i did too many testings so i did learn a lot of valuable lessons in gardening but I did too much at once. So this year, while I still am doing trial runs, I'm keeping them very manageable. So with all that being said, I'm so happy that you guys came along with me today on the garden tour. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Once again, still trying to do the weekly videos. I will try my best to keep with that commitment. Uh, I did recently start a part-time job just to help with income on top of the photography business so if sometimes i'm slacking it's because i'm working my day job even though this is also my day job and i just want to remind everyone that no matter what's going on in life make sure to go outside get dirty and have fun bye guys